Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Life from Karbala with me, your host Ahmed Ali. Uh, before I would like to introduce tonight's episode, I would like to send my condolences as well as the condolences of the Imam Hussain TV channel team uh, for the martyrdom of the peak of wisdom, the peak of eloquence, um, Imam uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Tonight, insha'Allah, we will discuss uh, one of the significant characters in history, if not the most significant character in history. Um, the character that symbolizes justice, equity, eloquence, wisdom, devotion, and bravery. Through the characteristics and through these characteristics, um, we have done no justice um, in explaining um, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him. Uh, however, tonight, inshallah, with our very special guest, uh, let's welcome him, Sayyid Ja'far al-Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna. Wa alaikum, How are you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Um, when talking about um, the character of Ali ibn Abi Talib, we're not talking about um, a specific uh, person or just a regular person in history. Uh, we're talking about the most, the bravest and the most courageous person um, history has ever witnessed. Indeed. And the most wise person after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Um, When talking about the characteristics and what um, Imam Ali peace be upon him symbolizes, um, how do we and how could we understand the characteristics and what Ali ibn Talib symbolized? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ومولاي يا أمير المؤمنين صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ومولاي يا أبا عبد الله الحسين يا ريتنا كنا معك سيدي فنفوز بذلك فوزا عظيما My dear brother, dear viewers, uh, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh It was a beautiful introduction, dear brother, that you made about Imam sallallahu alaihi wa And as you uh, mentioned, uh, indeed, we would never, we could never be uh, justice, as as you could say, uh, explaining uh, um, Amir al-Mu'mineen uh, or Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alaihi wa life. We can't uh, really uh, get um, get to know him in detail and, and, and very, very close. Uh, if you look throughout his, his life, and after his death, if you look at his, his uh, um, recommendations, his speeches uh, that he gave, uh, you could uh, you could um, feel that it is the prophet himself speaking. It is the yeah, the prophet himself was still. Yeah, it's like you feel that the prophet himself was alive until Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib departed us and and and, and, and was murdered. Uh, so much things, so many things that uh, that I have in mind, and of, of course you, dear brother, have also in mind about the character of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Uh, but we're just gonna have an overlook uh, at his history. Uh, since uh, since he was uh, a child, if I may say, since he was ten years old, eleven years old, uh, when the Prophet peace be upon him. Uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the Prophet to, uh, to, to call his tribe and his family to the way of Allah, uh, to Islam, from the, from the very first day, the, the first Muslim, the first one that joined the Prophet uh, uh, during his mission. And um, the narration and the, the history uh, and the story is, is very well uh, known uh, at the day when the Prophet, peace be upon him, invited his tribe and his family uh, for lunch. And uh, after that, he told them that I have become a prophet and this, is, uh, this and that, so and so. And this is Islam, this is what, what um, I'm going to be doing, this is, this is my mission. So who is going to be helping me? Uh, throughout and during uh, my prophethood uh, years 
and I promised that he will be Akhi wa waziri wa khalifati min ba'di and I assure him that he will be uh, like my brother and my successor um, and my minister during my life and my successor after my departure he, um, he, met, he said that three times and no one, every time Ali ibn Abi Talib, the 10 years old kid, would be the first and last to jump up and raise his hand and be like, I'm that one, the dear Prophet. Mm -hmm. And after the third time, and after the Prophet saw that uh, the elder ones in his family are not accepting uh, the, uh, this and considering it a lie that the Prophet is, is bringing, um, or whatever they, they were thinking on that day. After the third time, he held Ali ibn Abi Talib from his neck and shoulders and he said that you all witness and be witnesses that this guy, Ali ibn Abi Talib, is Akhi, my brother, and Waziri, uh, my minister, and wa Khalifati min Ba'di. And he said that as well three times. So Abu Jahl and others uh, were, they, uh, were there on that day. So they, they started making fun and, and laughing at Abi Talib uh, telling him that oh the Prophet is saying listen to him and obey him. So Abu Jahl was, uh, was telling Abu Talib that hey your cousin um, uh, Muhammad is, 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 is ordering you to, to obey your little kid and your little son making fun of, of him uh, on that day. So he became he became the prophet's successor since uh, he was uh, f um, since the first day and after he grew up we saw nothing of Ali ibn Abi Talib but a brave soldier that was along with the prophet in every single battle that the prophet would had and uh, for the sake of Islam and the first uh, for, the, uh, for the sake of r rising Allah's word uh, in the whole world uh, he was the first to be with the Prophet. He was never um, seen away from the Prophet before he gets married. Uh, he slept on the Prophet's bed at the night when all the tribes agreed on uh, killing and murdering and getting rid of uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, the, the, our dear Prophet, peace be upon him, and his family. <laughs> he was on that night when the Prophet had to, to run away in a very uh, um, tragic way, in a very dramatic way. I mean, at some, at some point he was put in a bag and carried by Abu Dhar al-Ghifari in order for him to pass some of the soldiers that were uh, keeping an eye on, on, on his, uh, on his um, room, basically, in his home. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Holy Quran. Yeah, verse came down. No matter, no matter. Because some people say that, okay, well, if I was there back then, I would have done the same, I would have slept. It's not an easy thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't mention it in the Holy Quran if it wasn't uh, very important. Because Muawiyah had, had a lot of many shots, many tries. Uh, like, for example, the, the statement. As-salatu uh, khayrun min al-nawm which our uh, Sunni <coughs> uh, brothers use there in, uh, in their call of uh, prayer especially the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the morning call of prayer they would say As-salatu khayrun min al-nawm instead of Hayya ala khayr al-amal which we Shia say so what was khayr al-amal? It was it was the his his sleep him sleeping in Prophet's bed that night. Uh, that's what they meant when they said khair al-amal. And then the, the the bigger meaning, the bigger idea of hayya ala khair al-amal, is is considering Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alaihi wasallam amir al-mu'minin and wilayat ahl al-bayt wilayat Ali ibn Abi Talib. But when they first said it, it was regarding his his uh, that night that he slept on the Prophet's bed. So Muawiyah wanted to have people forget that, just don't talk about it. It wasn't such a big yeah. issue, and he changed that verse to that uh, that that uh, verse to uh, as-salatu khairu min al-nawm. 
and um, throughout Prophet's history, uh, as I mentioned a bit earlier, uh, he was always uh, the first soldier to be with the Prophet, except in Tabuk, of course, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, ordered Amir al-Mu'mineen to stay with the, with the women and children uh, um, and not join the fight. And uh, also on that day, some of the companions came to Ali ibn Abi Talib making fun of him. Uh, trying to laugh at him that, hey, the Prophet wanted you to, to uh, stick to the ladies and, and babysit them instead of being where, uh, where men should be. So he went to the Prophet and told him uh, that this is what the companions are, are, are saying to me. And that was when the Prophet said his very known uh, uh, statement and Ya Ali, Anta minni bi manzilati Haruna min Musa, illa annahu la nabiyya ba'di. O Ali, you're uh, to me like Aaron, Harun, Prophet uh, Harun was from Musa. Uh, except that there's, there would be no Prophet after me. Uh, hundreds of narrations uh, regarding Ali ibn Abi Talib said by the Prophet, peace be upon him, الذي لا ينطق عن الهوى which, say, which says, uh, he who says nothing of his own uh, desire. Uh, hundreds if not thousands of statements regarding Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali ibn Ali Ali is the, the best judge and the justice uh, among you. <coughs> Ali is the most knowledgeable, uh, knowledgeable uh, among you. So listen to him and learn from him and do not teach him. Uh, that's that's uh, what the narration says. Ali yom al haq wal haq ma Ali yaduru ma'ahu haythu ma dar. The right, the the right rightness follows Ali ibn Abi Talib wherever he goes, meaning that he could never be wrong. Ali yon aqda kum Ali yon alamu kum. And all those uh, narrations that uh, that we heard uh, during the battles, the most brave, the bravest among among all, I say, I personally say, among all human beings uh, during the battles. And if someone doesn't believe that, he could ask Khaybar. Yeah. And. Uh, Ahsant, he could, he could be in the Khandaq, he could be in Malak al-Ahzab and ask Qal'at Khaybar, the castle of Khaybar, who picked up and, and, and pulled out that door and threw it meters away, the door that, that they needed 22, or in some histor other historians say 44 strong men to open and close it. If uh, some people don't believe his bravery, they could ask Marhab. And who divided him into two with a single strike of a sort? Uh, we're talking about we're talking about uh, an an extraordinary uh, person here, uh, a superhero in the battles. Yeah, exactly, if you will. Exactly, if you will say, a superhero in the battles, and also the kindest with the believers and yeah, with the mu'minin. As he was so, so, uh, so, as he was a horror to the kafirin during the battles, he was he was such a kind friend and brother uh, to the companions and to the mu'minin in general. Uh, until until the prophet passes away, departs us, departs the companions on that day, and. In the, uh, in the previous episodes, we mentioned uh, some of the oppressions that were applied on Ali ibn Abi Talib yeah. after, at the moment when the Prophet passed away. Before even Ali ibn Abi Talib is finished from burying the Prophet, peace be upon him. They had already been in the Saqifa, and when he finished uh, burying the Prophet, they told him, oh, by the way, it's finished, it's gone, Abu Bakr is a Khalifa. And they started to oppress him. And they started to oppress him. He who the prophet, he who the prophet, gave his own daughter 
سيدة نساء العالمين فاطمة الزهراء تهم أحسنت أحسنت the, the most precious creature after the prophet peace be upon him his own daughter uh, no one deserved, deserved her mm -hmm. but Ali ibn Abi Talib and no one deserved her mm -hmm. but Ali ibn Abi Talib and no one uh, deserved him but Fatima the Zahra, Lady okay. Fatima sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the oppressions started and the tragedy of Thursday that we, that we mentioned that we a couple of, um, yeah. that we discussed uh, episodes ago and all those oppressions and him uh, being um, at home, sitting at home for for around for around 25 years, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. People didn't uh, didn't want him, mm -hmm. uh, didn't want him to to uh, to be in charge. They oppressed him, and after that duration of time, uh, they they uh, they all came to him, begging him to accept being the leader. Uh, after the third, uh, third, one, the third guy uh, died, uh, Uthman. Did you want to mention something? No, yeah. I mean when, when speaking about the bravery of Imam Ali bin Talib, his bravery, um, as you know and as the, the dear viewers as well know, um, it's mentioned way before he was even born. I mean when Marhab, um, when they told him that uh, you're going he to fight. Told, he was told yeah. That, yeah. Uh, you, you you're gonna be killed I by someone, yeah, by someone called Haidara. And when he and came to, to like yeah, when he when he came to to fight Al Ibn Abi Talib, um, he said that what's your name? He said Haidara, and right away he was in he shock. Yeah, because he knew, and you know, history, you know, in, in the Bible he's, he's mentioned, in the Torah he's he's mentioned. Uh, but uh, when speaking, we'll come back to, to the oppression of Al Ibn Abi Talib. Inshallah, but when speaking about the eloquence and wisdom of Ali ibn Abi Talib, um, it's uh, there's so many quotes that he has said. Um, Ali ibn Talib is quoted to say that when Prophet Muhammad was on his deathbed, um, he told me to come closer, and as I did, um, he whispered in my ear, "One thousand chapters, and and from each." door of wisdom of those 1,000 was 1,000 chapters in, in, in those and you know when, when we hear that it just shows how significant Ali Ibn Talib was to Prophet Muhammad and how he was significant because he he, he was the one to, to change Islam Prophet Muhammad brought Islam but he's the one that uh, put Islam on the right path we if, should not forget definitely that uh, the Prophet indeed loved Ali Ibn Abi Talib the most oh, yeah. Definitely. It was his brother. He was his brother. He was uh, like himself, as the as as the Ayah Sharif, as the Holy Verse mentions, "Amfusana wa amfusakum." But we shall not forget, as as Shias and not Shias as well, uh, and Sunnis as well, that it wasn't only the love of Prophet for Ali ibn Abi Talib that makes us hold on to him uh, oh, yeah. now. The Prophet had. Uh, I mean, it was the order of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, ordered his prophet to mention Ali ibn Abi Talib yeah. as his successor after yeah. him and who's going to keep ahsan while lam taf'al with that threatening as yeah. we mentioned uh, earlier with yeah. that threatening uh, tone uh, to the prophet uh, so it wasn't only the the feelings that uh, that the prophet peace be upon him and his family had for Ali ibn Abi Talib mm -hmm. no it is the fact that Ali ibn Abi Talib is the successor of, of the Prophet, of yeah. the establisher of the, of the, of the religion, of mm -hmm. the faith, uh, after, the, after the establisher of the, of the faith. Mm -hmm. And he was the one, and, and also during that time that he was oppressed, during that time that he was uh, sitting at home and going to the masjid and praying all along and coming back, also during that time, if we go back to history, we find we find um, hundreds and hundreds of different, so if not thousands, of instances that uh, that uh, Abu Bakrin, wa Umarin, wa Uthman, and the companions and the Sahaba, they knew, even during the time that Ibn Abi Talib was was sitting at home, they knew that if someone comes, if a Jew come uh, comes with a, uh, comes up with a question, they know that. There would be no, no one but Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah, if they would find, if they would find 
and um, some 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 weird stories or weird incidents of of a lady two ladies delivering at the same yeah. night with with color with the lights off no lights no no they know that no one could malaha illa abul hasan malaha illa ali la abqan illa ala mu'adalatin laysa laha abul hasan may allah not keep me this is what umar said may allah yeah. keep not keep me uh, for for a mu'adala uh, how is the best way well, to say that? For a problem, for a problem, yeah. for a problem that that Ali ibn Abi Talib wouldn't be there for it. Mm -hmm. And also, I would like to to speak about his Salawatullah uh, about his justice, about the way he ruled uh, during uh, during the the time that he yeah. became the Khalifa, uh, which we're talking about around forty years. During that time, he set us he set us so many examples, so many examples, of how a successful ruler, uh, a governor, a political uh, such a person should be. Uh, he set us so many examples, so many examples. Uh, there's a story that during his khilafah, he had he had a amal, he had an employer. He had an employee uh, named Ali ibn Rafi' on the state's tragedy. Uh, he was the uh, the employee of Amir Mu'minin uh, on the state tragedy. Uh, um, uh, treasury, Afwan. Uh, is it treasure, right? Yeah. yeah, sorry, I said tragedy, sorry. Uh, so his own daughter. Umm Kulthum One day she was passing by uh, the place where they keep the money and the silver coins and the golds and stuff and the state uh, treasury. Mm -hmm. she, uh, she, she saw a very beautiful necklace. And it was during Ramadan in the, in the, in the end, uh, towards the end of the holy month and very close to maybe the eve of Eid. She saw a very beautiful necklace. So she comes to Ali ibn Rafi', uh, which is the employee of the Imam, and she tells him that, may I take this necklace? She is the daughter of the ruler of the Islamic world. And she goes there and asks to borrow, not to take, the support, to borrow that necklace for three days. She said that I will borrow it and I guarantee that if anything happened to it, that I would, that I would, um, um, uh, uh, that I would refund it, and uh, and I will bring it back after three days. So the guy gave her the necklace. Amir al-Mu'minin is home, back home. He sees that necklace, and he's like, "I've seen that necklace somewhere," and then he remembers that it was uh, there that he saw it. Yeah. He, he, he ordered his, his, his daughter to give him back that necklace to him. He went back to Ali ibn Rafi' very angry, telling him, telling him that, uh, do you want to, um, um, Muhammad, you are Muhammad, that, you, uh, that um, do you want to betray Allah and his prophet and his successor after him? He said, why, Amir al what, what did I do? He said that the necklace, why did you give it to my daughter? And he said that, I mean, it's your daughter and she wanted to borrow it only. She would bring it back uh, before the distribution of, 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 the, of, uh, of the money uh, among, the, among the people every, every month. <coughs> so he didn't accept that for his own daughter. Yeah. He gave it back and told him uh, to, to not do that again. He went back home. He saw his daughter, he thought that she might feel uh, sad for, for what happened. So he asked her a question that uh, are the daughters of the migrants and the companions all have the same necklace, same precious necklace on their necks mm -hmm. on the day of Eid? So my dear daughter, don't, uh, don't, um, don't uh, make money, necklace, jewelry, the fact that your father is a ruler, don't make all that take you away from, from the right path. Mm -hmm. And because the last, you, you have to be, uh, because you're my daughter, you have to be the last one who could wear a precious 
uh, necklace. And uh, the, all the daughters of the of the of the immigrants and the companions have to have the, have to have that before you. A similar story to that is um, the story and the famous story of the Aqil. Aqil the, 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 the actually, brother I found that so beautiful that if you would allow me after after you finish, that uh, I, I I wrote down the the exact words of the Amir mm -hmm. Muniz because it's so beautiful mm -hmm. because they're so beautiful as mm -hmm. they are. And I would like to read it out for, for, for you, dear brother, and for dear uh, yeah, viewers as well, well inshallah. Aqil was the older brother mm -hmm. of Amir al-Mu'mineen, and he was in Medina. And Amir al-Mu'mineen, sallallahu alayhi wa turned to, uh, he, was, he moved to, to uh, Kufa uh, during his leadership and uh, during his uh, ruling. So he considered, he came to Ali ibn Abi Talib one day, he came to, to, to Kufa and he stayed at Amir al-Mu'mineen's uh, home. Amir al-Mu'mineen had his son, his elder son, Al-Hassad al-Mushtaba, he told him to take care of his uncle, good care of his uncle, give him whatever he needs of garments and clothing and, and stuff. So after that, Amir al-Mu'mineen came back and it was dinner time. Aqeel, and because he was uh, sitting uh, with the ruler of the Islamic world back then, mm -hmm. he thought that the dinner will be so extraordinary. Yeah. So he was surprised uh, seeing that uh, the dinner is, 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 was very ordinary. Yeah. There was nothing so special well, about it. Ordinary. Or maybe less than ordinary. Yeah. He had some dates, uh, some Ahsent. yogurt, Ahsent. Some, Ahsent. And no, some bread, bread and that's all. Yeah. I believe that because he had guests, um, he would have had something else on, um, yeah. on that uh, dinner table uh, yeah. back, back then, on that day. So Aqil, he was, he was kind of uh, surprised and uh, he saw that and he told his brother that, come on, you're the ruler, you're the leadership of the Islamic world and is this the, uh, the, the dinner table of you? He said, the Imam Amir Bunin said, what is wrong with it? Yeah. I mean, don't we have to be uh, grateful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this na'mah? And he said, yeah, yeah, of course we have to be grateful. But I expected, and, and let me, and this, this is Aqeel. He, he said that, okay, okay, uh, you know what, um, I'm going to have this dinner and I want to uh, tell you what I need at mm -hmm. once so that I can go back to, to, to Medina, my dear brother. Uh, I want you to know that I have a debt of 100,000 silver coins they mention uh, the, that number. Uh, so uh, you as my dear brother and as the ruler uh, uh, and as the holder of state treasury, mm -hmm. uh, please have them uh, pay my debts as soon as possible. And also please don't forget your brother because, uh, because uh, I'm very short with, with money. I'm very poor and I got children. So try to not forget your, your, your brother. So Amir al-Mu'mineen I told him that uh, first of all 100,000 silver coins I will not be able to, to, to pay. I don't have that money to give you but as you mentioned you're my dear brother and my older brother and I know your situation and your children's yeah. situation so wait until the beginning of the month and uh, where it was when it was uh, you know the, 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 the treasuries and the monies used to be uh, okay. distributed so wait for that day, and I will uh, and I will withdraw uh, what I get uh, with you, my dear brother. So Aqil told them, "Come on, I mean, how much you take from from state uh, treasury so that you want to uh, withdraw it with me and, and and cut it in half and keep half for yourself? I'm I'm telling you that I got a lot of debts, and and it's gonna do no good for me." So the mom told him, he started debating and arguing Aqeel with his brother that you should give me, come on, you're the ruler, you're the... Uh, and Imam Amir al would tell him that no, 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 I can't, I, I can't have a hand on that money. It's not mine, it's the Muslim's money. Mm -hmm. It's everyone else's money. And I, go, I only got my own share. Yeah. So Imam Amir, uh, um, uh, and also they mentioned that Ali ibn Abi Talib, they were sitting at a roof so they could see the stores uh, around uh, the house of Amir al-Mu'mineen, around the, the very humble uh, home of Amir al-Mu'mineen. 
so he told him that uh, I will give you an idea. How about we go to these stores after they close, or they, they were closed maybe, I, we go now right now, break into some stores, and I'm sure they will have a lot of cash uh, collected from their sellings. So how about we take that, and uh, you, you take that, and I pay your debts. So Aqil, uh, he knew that Imam was, was, was making, yeah, yeah, was uh, uh, yeah, he was mocking him. So he told him that now you want me to, to steal from, from, from other Muslims, uh, these poor guys that have, that have worked all day to, to feed their families, you want me to, to, to go and, and extend a hand, uh, extend a hand uh, on their uh, money? He told him that Aqil, you're ordering me, you want me to extend my hand on the whole Islamic world's treasury and money. No, I'm telling you to steal from one or two, but you want me to steal from everyone. So which one is, is more, uh, which one is, is more fair? <coughs> yeah, it's also narrated that he heated up a metal. Uh, the, and the, this the, is exactly, yeah. this was right after, not right after that, but this was during a speech that Amir Mu'min uh, was, was giving people. So he mentioned this story of his brother. Uh, and I chose a part of it and I'll read it out for you. He said that I, cer I certainly saw Aqil fallen in, distit uh, in uh, destitution and he asked me a sa' which is almost three kilos uh, of wheat uh, of, 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 of anything. Uh, which is almost three kilos. He asked me for a saw of your share of wheat and saw, and I personally saw his children with disheveled hair and dusty look due to starvation, as though their faces had been blackened uh, by, uh, and indigo, by indigo. He came to me several times asking me to, to give you from, the, from, from your money. And he repeated that so many times to me. He, request, uh, he repeated his request so many times. So I heard him. I heard him. I gave him an ear. He thought, so he thought that I would sell my faith to him because I'm hearing and listening to him. And by the way, Aqil was, was uh, blind uh, on, right. on that time. Yeah, he couldn't, he couldn't, uh, he couldn't see. Then I just, then I just heated, just heated a small piece of iron and took it near his body so that he might take a lesson. Then he cried like someone in pain and in illness. He was about to get burned with its branding. Then I said to him, moaning women would uh, may, uh, moan uh, over you, O oh, Aqil, do you cry? On, ac on account of this heated iron which has been made by a man for fun while you're driving me towards a fire that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the powerful has prepared for um, as, a, as a punishment mm -hmm. as a punishment his, his, his wrath and the, the, the bad de uh, doers should you cry uh, from pain but I should not cry from the uh, flames of, of hellfire. Salatullah wasalamu alayka ya amir al-mu'mineen. And the funny thing is that Muawiyah, after hearing this speech of Ali ibn Abi Talib, he called, uh, he called Aqil and he invited him to, to, to Sham, to Syria. Mm. He told him that I will send you a ride and I will send you company and I want you to accept my, and we just want to talk. So Aqil went to him. On the day that he arrived, Muawiyah had prepared such a huge uh, invitation and table of, of lunch or dinner or whatever time it was. Uh, and he uh, welcomed Aqil. He told him what he want. Tell me what you want. He said that, okay, well, I told my brother that I have a hundred thousand silver coins uh, debt and, um, and, you know, my children and, and, um, and they're, not, they're not that, that well. 
So Muawiyah gave him 400,000 silver coins. He said that 100,000 for your, for your debt, and this is the double, and that's a double of the double. And take it from me, and, and consider it a gift. And all I want from you, Aqil, he knows that Aqil wouldn't sell his brother to him. He wouldn't sell out his brother. Mm -hmm. uh, but he said that all I want from you, Aqil, is to come out and, and tell everyone that, tell all my people here in Sham that I asked for Ali ibn Abi Talib for three kilos of wheat, what Ali ibn Abi Talib says and he, during his speech. Uh, he didn't give it to me. Yeah, and Muawiyah is so kind so and generous. so generous with me and he gave me 400,000 silver coins. So it's funny because Aqil came out and he had prepared, Muawiyah had prepared a uh, uh, a stage, a gathering mm. for him and all that and I told him, okay, then you can tell people. So Aqil stood up after taking that money and he said that, oh people, when I asked my brother, my younger brother, the ruler of the Islamic world, uh, to give me um, some that was not my right, mm -hmm. some that was over my right, from your money, from Muslims' money, he preferred his faith over me. Mm -hmm. He didn't listen to me, and he did this and this to me. But when I asked Muawiyah to help me with 100,000 uh, silver coins, he gave me 400,000 silver coins of, his, of, of your money, by the way. And uh, I know that Muawiyah, I asked him to sell his faith, and he did so for me. Mm -hmm. And this is the okay. difference between between Ali ibn Abi Talib and Muawiyah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Between Muawiyah and Allah alayhi and Amir Mu'minin sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These stories are just small portion, yeah, small I'm portions I'm of of, of, of the righteous life mm -hmm. of Amir Mu'minin sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There's a similar story to that uh, with uh, Talha and Zubair when they came to Ali ibn Abi Talib. And they Absolutely. they wanted some political business, uh, positions, in the ruling of Ali Nabi Talib. Uh, when they entered, uh, it's significant. When they entered, um, he extinguished one candle, and he lit another. So when they asked, they, they were surprised. Like we come to you on an important matter, wow. but uh, you surprised us when you extinguished, extinguished this candle, candle and you lit and this. Up another one. Uh, they wondered why. He said, "You you came to me on personal matters, wow. and the candle I was working on." Was, was purchased from the Absolutely. public treasury. Absolutely. So I ext extinguished that because that's bought from there and I lit one that's, that's my bought from money. my own pocket. I mean, when, when we hear that, it's, it's, it's unfortunate to see what, what's going on in the world right now. I'm not saying that our politicals should be exactly the same because they can't. They can't. They no. could never be like Ali Ibn Talib. They couldn't. They can't even get close to how he was. Definitely. But but uh, what I what I uh, tell myself first of all, and tell everyone else, especially the politics nowadays, uh, is to learn from Ali Ibn Abi Talib. Take some lessons from Ali Ibn Abi Talib. If we can. Take some lessons from Ali Ibn Abi Talib because because he was he was. The righteous. He had the the, the most righteous life ever. Uh, everyone knows that Ali ibn Abi Talib, mm -hmm. uh, was right, mm -hmm. and anything else compared to him and his way of of um, of ruling uh, was was wrong, basically. Definitely. Remember, so even take lessons. That's yeah. that's what I want from, from myself. First of all, that's what I Inshallah remind myself. First of all, and everyone Inshallah. else that we should take lessons, uh, small portions, even if we can, from from his life, his justice, his knowledge, his wisdom, as you mentioned, dear brother, uh, how he used to treat his family, mm -hmm. how he used to treat his his his, uh, his children. His, his, his friends, his companions, his enemies, his enemies as well, and and all that. Inshallah. Mama Ali Ibn Talib also mentions a very significant quote. I mean, um, and this, as you mentioned, if they can, if politicians can also can only uh, work on this uh, quote by Ali Ibn Talib, I mean, their government would be, would be successful. Yeah. Um, he says, um, a politician or a person in, in a ruling position um, should not rule over the people, but should serve them. 
I mean, when hearing that, I mean, now we see um, that you know, even even if someone gets a small position, he starts you know ordering people around, pushing people, you know. Ah, or having you know 50 guards with them when walking ah, we see that in bin haramain oh, 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 it's, it's 150 as yeah, <laughs> closer to yeah. back yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it reached 150 well. but uh, if we read if we read his his letter salam allah to to al wulat mm -hmm. to to malik al ashtar ahsan to his ministers if we read his letter to salman al muhammadi radhiyallahu ta'ala alayhi uh, uh, during his, his leadership, we find so much tips. So uh, we find a way of life. We find Definitely. a way we should it should be a rule Definitely. should be. As you mentioned, dear brother, he uh, uh, is basically a servant. And if we uh, also see his students, not Ali ibn Abi Talib. I mean, the guy is just too high for me. I can I can follow the the, the footsteps of Salman al Muhammadi. One of the, the best Muhammad uh, ibn Abi Bakr, Bakr Ahsan, Muhammad son ibn Abi Bakr, Muhammad, Abu Bakr. Muhammad is my son, but from, from Abu Bakr, uh, from Abu Bakr. Uh, because, because he was a good, good student of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And that's why he said that he's a, uh, because he knew that his father and his way is, uh, and path is wrong. And that Ali ibn Abi so he stuck to Ali ibn Abi Talib, and mm -hmm. he was with him um, well, through his life. Most companions of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ahsan, Ahsan, Malik al Ashtar, Allah Taala, his his bravery, his way of justice, his his way of, of, of dealing with problems. Mm -hmm. They all set examples for us. Definitely. Amir al Mu'minin and those students of his uh, are considered strong, always alive uh, samples that we could use in this our daily life. Uh, right. in, this, uh, in this in this in this very uh, very day i mean it's not only a matter of of something some incidents that took place 1400 years ago no mm -hmm. no they are they are like amir mu'minin sallallahu alayhi wasallam alayhi is like quran al kareem is like quran ahsan al quran al quran al natiq ahsan tawajman ahsan tawajman so what he says remains useful and, 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 and for us and samples and, and, and you know, for us until the day that uh, we meet him. Yeah, we can't just choose a part of religion and say that we're following that. No, we have to choose the whole religion the whole and accept it. And accept it. But uh, Sayyidina, we're coming to a conclusion of the episode. Um, and uh, it's, I would like to mention a quote by Ali ibn Abi Talib uh, regarding uh, forgiveness and, and mercy. He says, be like a flower that gets its fragrance even to the hand that crushes it. I mean, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib is so significant, but this quote is, so is interesting if, if we ponder upon so it. Beautiful. Because a flower, you know, even a, a person who crushes it, you know, would, uh, get, the beautiful would, smell. would get the smell of it. He, Ali ibn Abi Talib is telling us to be like the flower even if someone hurts us. You know, we, we can still shine and show them the bright side and show them our, our true ethics and morals of Ahlul Bayt. So when we say Ahlul is face hatred uh, with kindness. Definitely, definitely. Uh, so if you'd like to add anything on. Sallallahu alayhi wa amir al-mu'mineen. Thank you, my dear, my dear brother. Uh, there isn't, um, I don't have much to add except prayers. Uh, for our uh, 12th Imam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam May Allah hastens his reappearance inshallah and and have us fight uh, with him along uh, with his army inshallah inshallah thank you very much Sayyidina thank you very much inshallah uh, inshallah tomorrow we'll continue the discussion inshallah, inshallah, uh, about the martyrdom of Ibn Talib my heartfelt condolences as well inshallah uh, for, the, for the Muslim world for this uh, tragedy, uh, that um, the, the tragedy of the day that we lost the master of all believers, Amir al Mu'minin, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Thank you very so much. May Sayyidina. Allah um, keep us um, and consider us and count us uh, with His companions and His Insha lovers. Inshallah. Inshallah. I mean, just the, of judgment, if, if not His companions, maybe just the followers. Maybe for Ahsan, lovers and followers. Inshallah. Inshallah. So thank you very much. Thank Sayyidina. you very much, brother. And thank, thank you, you very much, much uh, respected viewers. Stay tuned, inshallah, for tomorrow's episode uh, where we, inshallah, will discuss um, uh, the, the oppression that Ali ibn Talib faced uh, during his lifetime as well as after his death. 
um, I would like to request from the respected viewers not forget us um, in your prayers, uh, especially inshallah. on nights uh, like Al Qadr. And inshallah, we will not forget you as well uh, when we go to visit the holy shrines of Imam Hussein al Abbas and Ali ibn Abi Talib al Najaf. Uh, so stay tuned. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wassalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for your Shukran jazeelan. Barakallah bik.